position in the lunch queue later. <laughs> okay, so this is meant to be a fairly basic introduction to parallel programming and how to easily take advantage of your multi-core CPUs with Perl 5. My name is Darko Bradovic, I'm from Germany, working as a scientist in the analysis of large complex social networks, which includes a lot of long-running, more or less uh, dumb computations. And that's how I came to the topic. So my history is I'm programming Perl since 15 years, always in a linear paradigm. In 2007, it's the first time I got a dual-core CPU, but uh, it didn't really change my attitude, because I always kept you telling that you have one core in the background to handle responsiveness of your desktop, background processes, so I was very fine with that. Until last year, when my boss decided to give me a new workstation with uh, four physical cores, even eight logical cores, lots of RAM and cache, and ever since then, whenever I used uh, simple linear programming, I had a bad conscience because I knew all this was expensive and just lying in the background. So I decided to do something. Even more if uh, the new form of Moore's law is that uh, cores might double every 2.5 years. So I guess in five years uh, I will sit in front of a 32 core workstation and time to try to take advantage of it. So parallel programming. Um, a search on CPAN for parallel returns a lot of results, so of these 700 results you have around 100 modules with deal with which deal with parallelism more or less, but there are different purposes and I want to start by just clarifying what I'm talking about and which other concepts um, are related but different from what I'm focusing in this talk. So what I mean when I say parallel is simultaneous calculation. So I have something that is calculating all the time, and this usually means to split a process, uh, a problem to different processes, typically using forking, and there are, except uh, the fork function, you have some basic modules which help you here. Another thing is asynchronous programming, which can be used either to overcome uh, latencies on the file system or on the network, or if you follow an event-driven paradigm, this is sometimes concurrent, not necessarily parallel, but can be parallel. So uh, you see callbacks often when using crawlers, you should use it, but um, it's not necessarily parallel. Um, there are master-slave principles where you have a server with many requests which you want to dispatch to different processes. So Apache usually uh, works like that, and uh, you have either worker threads or pre-forking models, and of course there are also CPAN modules in the parallel namespace <coughs> which help you here, but uh, I don't want to handle servers here. Distributed com uh, computing means that uh, you're not trying to split your problems to your cores on the same machine, but you want to take advantage of multiple machines and distribute the problem over the network, which has uh, slightly different implications, and today is often so there's a map reduced paradigm. Um, I want to look into this. So we are talking about parallel computing on the same machine. And um, yeah, forking is one of the most basic concepts here. So um, when talking about fork, I just want to have a quick look at the difference between processes and threads, because uh, you often find both these terms uh, when dealing with the topic. So in Unix, uh, a process is the program with its instructions, all the data in memory and the resources, which are typically memory addresses as well. And this can be forked, which means you get an exact, more or less exact clone of your process with an own address space and its own copy of the resources. This is a very robust uh, principle, but you don't have a shared address space by default. Of course, there are solutions to get there. And a Unix thread uh, was once defined as a lightweight process where you have um, a shared thread of execution within the same address space, so especially also with the same resources, which is much more efficient, but uh, also sometimes difficult to get it right, synchronized, so you have all the concurrency problems, you can yield them, and so on. Um, this is often what you would want, but uh, in Perl, um, Perl threads have no <coughs> shared address space, so this is not uh, easily possible there, unfortunately. 
So how to start in Pro 5? Of course, there's more than one way to do it. Uh, after scanning CPAN, um, I came up with about 30 modules, uh, which you could use to implement um, parallel computing for multi-core CPUs. And I will go uh, through three of them today with the goal that, uh, driven by laziness, so I don't know, um, I've been talking to some colleagues of mine and I see it quite often that uh, you don't want really to deal with uh, process and thread management unless you have a very severe uh, long-running problem. So typically I would rather prefer to let something run overnight, uh, un not parallelized, uh, and saving me half an hour of programming. Um, I think lots of people have an equal attitude um, in this unbalanced execution time versus implementation time. So the mission statement for today is to get things parallelized in less than a minute and then the effort is uh, not uh, too large to avoid it. And then you will actually use it and take advantage of it. So one first module is parallel simple. And uh, assuming you have a problem, So like I said, I like to deal with networks and uh, in this example I'm loading a network and I just want to get uh, some basic, printed out some basic information of the network which means I want the highest occurring page rank metric, the highest occurring authority metric which are relatively complex to compute along with the number of different uh, connected components in the networks and the density. This. So loading the network takes about one second and calculating uh, the metrics uh, five and a half seconds. So now, since I really do not care about the order, um, the things are printed out. So now use parallel simple. Unfortunately, we have to import the, its PRUN method, which is not exported by default. And then we can just use this block of computation. And it needs to get um, past a list of subroutine references. <coughs> And of course you can also, these two last uh, statements are really shorter, the main computation is taking place. Okay, and uh, the P run now takes all these uh, subroutine references, forks the process for each of them, runs them in parallel, and when all of them are finished, um, execution control um, is continuing. So executing this now after a second, the first thing to finish was the third block and then the other two follow and overall we reduced execution time from six and a half to four seconds. And you will see down there at the user time all this needed that we have a slight overhead because of the process management and so on. So it's, it's not really a 100% gain of your CPU course but this is more or less normal. Uh, one thing you have always to take uh, into account when using um, forking is whatever you do here uh, operates on a clone of your memory. So everything you change here in memory uh, is forgotten when you return from the P-run, which often means that some problems cannot be uh, parallelized like this. So for example, um, here I'm calculating page ranks and for all nodes a value is stored in the network da data structure but as this method is now executed in a different process uh, when coming back uh, all these values are gone. Since I was only interested to printing out one, this is okay. So in summary um, you 
get, don't get return values um, of the things you execute. Uh, you cannot rely on memory changes, but if you have anything to be printed out or to be persisted, um, you can take advantage of it. And it makes sense with uh, two or more cores, you can easily fork how many processes you want, as long as you have the memory and the operating system will take care of uh, scheduling them. So, and it works very fast to implement. Another thing which I probably like most is parallel map. And as the name already says, um, it parallelizes the map statement. So assuming we have a simple program which is just there to calculate uh, faculty values um, from 0 to 5,000 and just printing out uh, the faculty of 5 for control or to control execution. So running this unparallelized will take about 5 seconds. Now, using a parallel map means we do load the module. And guess what? Parallelize the map. And since on this notebook I have two cores only, um, this is now with some overhead as you see on the user time, uh, nearly a dub double speed up. Especially interesting, um, this module does a lot of cool things uh, because you don't have to care about how it splits the array for the faculty. In, in fact, um, three quarters of the computation are in the second part of the array. So um, it splits it on even odd in this case, which makes sense. And so, um, as long as your map does not use side effects on the alias of the variable, um, you can just uh, parallelize it like I've shown. Um, of course, uh, in a fork, you have also aliases, but to a clone of your variable, which is uh, pretty useless after the map is finished. And it will automatically um, fork you n processes, where n is determined either by an environment variable or by looking into proxy info on uh, Linux systems. And it will automatically merge all the return values into an array for you. So you have a minimum of uh, administrative tasks around it. The third module is sub-parallel, where I very much like the idea, but had some trouble, as I will show. Um, just queuing up. So assuming we have um, Again, a network problem. This time I want the nodes with the highest um, page rank metric and the node with the highest authority metric, which are two of the most popular metrics around, and just see if they agree <coughs> on which node is the most important one in the network. So I uh, retrieve these two nodes by subroutines, and then I compare if um, it's the same index, and in that case the metrics agree, or if not, they disagree. Executing this uh, will again take about six seconds, and we find out that uh, it's the same node according to both metrics, which is the most important. And again, we can parallelize it. This time, I will use subs parallel, which in fact gives you a new attribute for subroutines. Unfortunately, uh, the process doesn't quit on my machine. Mm -hmm. uh, I will come to details. I try to kill it as soon as it's finished. Just to show you there is a time advantage, uh, even with my reaction delay. Uh, what happens? So, it's 
implemented not using fork but using curl threads, which might be part of the issue. I don't know. I didn't yet look into the details. And it has a very cool uh, idea in case that, uh, in fact, it's more async than parallel. Um, you call a function, you get a return value, which is not a promise, uh, as we've seen yesterday, if you've been in Jonathan's talk. But it's a variable which um, you can carry around. And as soon as you try to read it, um, execution will stop and wait until your subroutine is finished and actually delivers the value. So here, control is immediately returned, here as well. And in this, uh, and we have two processes running in the background. And when evaluating this if condition, um, execution stops and waits until they are both finished. Uh, I like that very much, and definitely will keep uh, watching and investigating the issue. So um, you get one fork per subcode, so be very cautious not to include, not to parallelize subroutines you call inside a map or something like that, uh, which will cause you lots of forking. Um, the waiting mechanism is relatively nice, so if you're familiar to async, uh, you will have no problems with this. Um, and yeah, there seems to be some trouble with curl threads, at least in this old setup. Um, maybe it's better on new curls. And so what's the conclusion with these uh, ultra quick uh, methods? On my Xeon workstation in the office, when usually using four processors, I usually get, up, uh, get a speed up of factor three, which is uh, quite nice, uh, opposed to the effort I'm investing. And then for others of you who also bought these uh, Intel CPUs with logical cores, uh, I want to make a quick excursion um, on, on this hyperthreading, what it is. So the problem behind, or why this was invented, is CPU pipelining. Um, so in fact, in a CPU, an, execu uh, an instruction is not executed in one cycle, but it needs five cycles to process it st stage by stage. But you have, uh, at the same time, five um, <coughs> instructions in the pipeline. So <coughs> In the best case, every cycle finishes one instruction. This is a very simplified risk pipeline. Um, the issue is that uh, if instructions depend upon each other because it uses the value or we have branches, um, the pipeline is not always full. And this changed a lot or resulted into problems when Intel introduced the NetBurst architecture with the Pentium 4, which had uh, 20 instead of 11 stages in the pipeline, which resulted into many, many gaps and uh, relatively poor performance uh, for the clock frequency. And then they in in this, um, invented this hyperthreading, which just means you still have only four physical pipelines but you have two threads uh, sharing one pipeline. So um, they have interweaved 10 instructions each, and this reduces gaps a lot, basically uh, even better than in the Pentium 3 architecture before. So this means on my uh, office machine, at least, that if I use now eight processes in parallel, I get a speed up of four. Um, at the cost of eight time memory usage, so this means I'm more or less limited uh, to eight processes with eight gigabyte RAM each, which is still enough for a lot of problems for me. And well, if you have it, you may use it, but don't expect too much. So parallelizing in Pro 5 can be very simple if you don't want to care about process thread management. Um, if you want to, please do so. So this is more like an encouraging talk. Uh, getting into sharing variables and, and things uh, can result into very cool programs, especially since in the future we will have much more cores um, available. This is more or less unavoidable, I think. And yeah, so thanks for your listening. Start using parallelizing if you didn't do so yet for your problems um, and enjoy the extra free, free time it will give you. So thank you. Okay, so I don't know if we have 20 minutes uh, over. If you have questions, I'll still be around here. Or I think it's best. Or if you have some question now, one or two, you may speak up. Unfortunately, I will not notice you to vision. But, yeah.